welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. So nowadays I'm making a series of videos uh, for this simulator and in this regard I'm using Cessna 172 which is equipped with a Garmin G1000, a very nice uh, GPS navigation device and plus you can fly this plane on autopilot as well. So um, in this regard I've already uploaded two videos in which I've told you how to make a flight plan and plus how to start this plane. Now this one uh, will be covering uh, uh, the autopilot part. So I will tell you how to fly this plane on autopilot. Although G1000, as you can see, uh, both the screens, this is the private flight display and you have uh, the navigation display. It has got so much information on it. Uh, so I will not uh, try to uh, cramp up all the information in one video, whatever is required. I will just tell you about those features. And then plus I will be also making another video in which I will tell you how to configure the G1000. But for this video, whatever is required, we'll just only go through that. Okay, because you know, I don't want to overwhelm uh, with you, uh, you guys with all the information. So right now I have a working flight plan over here in this plane and it is already loaded. So if you go over here on the navigation display, you will see that this flight plan is there. Just move your cursor to this um, knob range and you can just zoom in and out and have a look at it. Okay. Now you see this magenta line. So when I will turn on the autopilot, it will actually uh, follow this path. And this is the current path that the plane is about to follow and the white line shows the intended path that the plane will be actually taking that's it so uh, if you keep on zooming in you will also see uh, the airport um, in detail so you'll know the taxiways and plus uh, you know where the runway is great now there are two more things coming over here you will see la and two la's actually this is ndb non-directional beacon and this is the vor um, which is very high frequency omni direction range. These are the basically two uh, devices or the ground stations uh, which are used for navigation. An old system of navigation, but uh, still it's used. So I will be making another video for this plane in which I will tell you how to carry out VR navigation. And that's it. Now, before the takeoff, what you have to do is this you have to just uh, get the charts. Uh, if you don't uh, see this uh, thing coming over here, let's say if OPIS is coming, just go back and click this I button and you will uh, get this information over here on the left hand side. Click this, get the maps and now you have the standard instrument departure coming over here on this page. So I can just, uh, um, one more thing I can do, I can press tab on my keyboard and this will pop out. You can adjust the size of it by going into the settings, small, medium or large. Let's keep it like this and you can change the orientation. Either you want it like horizontal or you need vertical. So uh, let's go back to this page and let's zoom in. So this is SID, standard instrument departure. And uh, this is uh, the standard instrument departure that I will be using for this flight. AKBER 1D, Akbar 1D. And it will take me to this point Akbar. So after the takeoff, I will just turn left and I will just follow this. If there are any uh, speed or altitude constraints, uh, they will be displayed over here. Right now, there is nothing coming uh, for this route. You can see it's a simple takeoff. And uh, that's it. As you can see over here, let's say uh, for this uh, waypoint, uh, maximum speed is coming 220 knots. Again, 220 knots over here. Again, 230 knots over here. For this, I cannot see any speed constraint. Obviously, these speeds are not applicable to Cessna 172. It cannot go at this speed. The maximum is maybe 100, 910, depending on the wind. So I can just press tab again, and this tab will go. So before um, um, you take off, you always look at the standard instrument departure and see if there is any altitude or speed constraint. That's it. So if you look at the primary flight display, there are a few things that you have to do. First of all, uh, you have to turn on the flight director. This is actually um, this uh, magenta arrow that's coming over here on the primary flight display. This actually will tell you your intended path and the yellow will be what you are actually doing. Uh, so right now uh, on this screen, you will also see two things coming heading in DTK, uh, desired track. Desired track is basically the course where you are supposed to go. And uh, heading is where actually you're heading. Uh, so your um, heading should be uh, your desired track. This is where you should be. So this is the heading button over here. You can just uh, move it and you can just change it. So I will also match it with the desired tracks, 359 degrees. 
because uh, if you are going to fly this plane on autopilot there will be two things that you'll be doing either you'll be flying in the heading mode or you'll be flying in the gps mode so obviously in order to uh, follow the flight plan uh, you have to fly in the nav mode or the gps mode but um, in case if you're flying in the heading mode you should have your heading bug in the right direction um, then there are a few things i'll just keep on telling you um, uh, throughout the course of this video uh, as I've told you before, I don't want to just scrap up all the information in one video. Great. And uh, uh, before I just move, there's one thing that you have to do. You have to get your nav lights on. Uh, so if you just go out in the plane, you will see uh, there will be two lights on wingtips. One is a green light over here. And another one is a red light, which is on this side. If any plane sees your plane uh, in the night, uh, in the morning obviously it's very clear but especially in the night if uh, any plane sees uh, your plane and uh, looks at a green light so it will know that the plane is going towards its right side and for the red light it knows that the plane is going towards its left side backspace again go inside the plane you have the nav lights as well and then uh, let's uh, turn on the taxi lights I press backspace and uh, you will see uh, this is the taxi light it's on that's it Now, uh, this is the parking brake. Uh, you can uh, click it and you can release the parking brake. That's it. So these are the rudder paddles. Um, I will explain it to you, uh, the functionality of the rudder paddles. But um, you press both these pedals and the brake is applied. And when you release them, the brake is released. And uh, similarly, during the taxi, if uh, you have configured the brakes to one of the buttons on the controller, you can just apply the brakes like this. So now the brakes are off and then uh, let's uh, start the taxi and uh, from there I will just uh, tell you more things about this plane. Now the best thing about this plane is this that you know, during the taxi you can see the taxi line on the primary flight display so you really don't have to look out <laughs> you can just look at your screen and uh, follow uh, this line to the runway as this uh, plane doesn't require a full uh, runway for the takeoff so that's why I will be just taking off from the middle of the runway no need to go all the way to the start of the runway 36 right is the one that I will be using it's on the it says like in front of us you have to turn left for that you have to hold short of the runway to do few things before you take off stop here apply the parking brake as you can see it's now applied now for again uh, for the takeoff uh, just make sure that the strobe is on it's actually a light which blinks and it tells other planes in the air that your plane is there <laughs> so if you look at your screens right now you can see uh, this is the strobe and uh, it's on the other side as well so you need strobe and uh, remember this thing uh, strobe is only required once you're on the runway uh, during the takeoff so that's why before entering the runway just turn on the strobe and once you're off the runway just turn off the strobe another thing about the lights of the plane um, it's been a very interesting topic if you are not uh, a pilot uh, then <laughs> you get really confused which turns to turn off and turn on uh, but I was talking to one of the pilots they say even in the morning, uh, we turn on the landing lights, even they call it the land lights. Um, uh, but uh, during the takeoff, also turn them on because, you know, then uh, the, your plane has got really bright lights even in the morning. Uh, from the distance, when a plane sees your plane, uh, it sees the lights more clear uh, than the plane itself. So that's why you should have some bright lights on your plane so that, you know, other planes which are taking off or landing specifically, uh, they see you uh, from the distance. So that's why it's better to turn on all the lights. So. During the flight, all these lights will be on except for the taxi and for the landing lights, but the beacon will remain on throughout the flight, nav will be on throughout the life, uh, flight and plus the strobe. That's it. Uh, now there are a few things that I just want to uh, tell you. If you look at over here, this is basically uh, the flight mode enunciator. This is called, called the FMA. 
uh, these uh, two things on the left hand side and the, for the right hand side these are the radio frequencies for the navigation and uh, for the communication so if you're doing ATC communication this is the panel now uh, this is the side that you should be looking at and if you are following or tracking any VOR or NDB uh, then you have this and plus I will be using it for ILS so um, I will show it to you uh, in that video in which I will be performing ILS but right now uh, we can just uh, tune into some VORs and just to show you around how it works okay right now you can see a roll is coming so what will happen is this as soon as uh, I will take off I will turn on uh, the autopilot by pressing this button autopilot AP and uh, the plane will keep on flying um, in, a, in, a, in a straight path uh, till the time I use heading mode or nav mode so heading mode is a mode which actually uh, will enable the plane to fly in the heading mode whatever the heading I will set the plane will fly regardless of the flight plan because this is the flight plan that you have but if you want your plane to follow the flight plan then you should have nav on and I will also tell you in this video that if your plane deviates from the flight plan then how you get back to the flight plan again so these are the two things that should be uh, keeping in your mind I will be using this then you have um, this uh, knob over here there are two um, knobs big and the small one the small actually changes uh, the units for the altitude in, in uh, hundreds and the bigger one changes it in thousands so let's uh, bring it to 1000 or rather zero and then change it so let's say after the takeoff I will fly at uh, 5000 feet so I will move the, the larger knob and set the altitude to 5000 so now once I will turn on the autopilot um, I will climb up to 5000 feet by pressing this button vertical speed this basically button controls the vertical speed of the plane so you were um, uh, and plus your vertical path is decided by these two buttons up and down how much uh, pitch up or pitch down you want um, so I will also uh, clear this to you during the flight okay and uh, if you press this button altitude so whatever the altitude you will be on and the plane will keep on flying on that altitude another thing uh, just make sure uh, that you have a GPS coming over here if I press CDI uh, you will see localizer now what is this I will just give you a little bit of introduction CDI is basically course deflection indicator so this is actually your course deflection, deflection indicator this shows you that either you are following the course and plus how much deflected you are so right now you can see I am off this magenta line if I just zoom in you will see that I have to move forward and then once I'm here then I am following this path and this course deflection indicator is also showing me if you look at this needle if I'm over here this needle will be down and if I'm over here this needle will be over here up so uh, you have to not only uh, follow this direction but rather keep it in the middle so that you're following this line because you know once you take off you'll be flying in the heading of 359 degrees so 359 degrees can be like this you know you can be going like this or like this so this, you're going in the heading of 359 degrees but you're not following the course so this actually deviation tells you whether you're following the course or not so once I will take off I will show you how this deflection is being um, uh, being um, uh, being understood and how you follow this deflection uh, then if you press CDI uh, it will take me to the localizer one um, actually right now there is no VR uh, tuned so that's why um, there's nothing coming and if I press CDI 2 this is the localizer 2 because you can just tune into two VORs as you can see nav 1 and nav 2 and then you GPS so let's say if I uh, tune into the Lahore VR how do I get the information of the Lahore viewer? If you go over here, you will see uh, this uh, knob over here. There are so many things. <laughs> G1000 is really interesting. You have to really understand. So if you move your, uh, let me just get rid of it. Uh, so now over here, FMS, uh, you will see two knobs. Again, the big one and the small one. So if you move the big one, you can just scroll through uh, different uh, menus and this display. Now if you go to this point nearest you will see all the nearest points and uh, nearest airports if I move the small one it will tell me you want to see the nearest airports you want to see the near nearest intersections NDBs or VORs this is a VOR for Lahore and if you want to see what is the frequency for Lahore it is already shown over here uh, sorry uh, let me just go back again okay 
So now you can just uh, scroll through it and uh, you can press uh, clear and that menu will disappear. And now you can, uh, sorry, now you can see all the information. If you press left mouse, as once you see this hand sign, you press this left mouse button and press right, the, you will see this cursor blinking, now it's active and then you can scroll through all uh, the VORs which are near this airport. So for Lahore LA, uh, you can see uh, the heading of this uh, VOR, where it is, 310 degrees, how far it is from your plane, 0.4 nautical miles, is just right over here. And uh, plus uh, you can see uh, the GPS coordinates of it and plus the frequency, 112.7. So I can tune into this uh, VR over here. So now you'll see this knob uh, for the nav. Again, the larger knob and the smaller knob. Right now, uh, nav 2 is active. If I want to change it, uh, change it to nav 1. Bring your mouse over here, left mouse, press right button, and now it's active. So it's 112.7, uh, so I can tune into this. If I move the larger knob, these numbers will change, and the smaller knob will change these numbers. So 112. Point seven. That's it. Now, right now, this is not the active frequency. Active frequency is 110.50. If I press this button swap, this frequency will come over here, 112.7. So now this is the active frequency. If I just uh, press the CDI again, now you will see uh, this information has started to come. Um, there is a huge deflection because this VR is a bit far, so I have to travel towards the VR's direction in order to get aligned with the VR and then fly it. So this VR is now being picked up. That's it. Localizer too. I'm not using it. So in this video, I will not just so much talk about the localizers, but just for information, I just wanted to tell you. So let's uh, clear this. Um, sorry. Uh, press this uh, flight plan button, and you will be taken to this uh, page. And if you press flight uh, plan again you will see all the flight plan over here. So let's get rid of it. Let's zoom out a bit so that I see where I'm going. So right now, another thing that you have to do is this, get the flaps, basically flaps are over here. Yeah, if I press backspace, I will show you the flaps. They are extension of the wings. You have to have uh, flaps. Uh, if I extend the flaps by one notch, you will see they're moving down. And the flaps actually provide lift to the plane at slower speeds. So during the takeoff, the flaps are required. And uh, the heavier the plane, more flaps are required. But right now, as I'm doing a short flight uh, with uh, very less weight, so that's why I just need uh, flaps by one notch. But uh, you have uh, performance calculators, uh, takeoff performance calculators on the internet. And for Cessna 172, depending on the weight that you're carrying, the fuel that you're carrying, you can have uh, um, different flap settings. So let's uh, press backspace again and go inside. And if you want to control um, the the flaps from inside, this is the control. So the flaps up, all the way retracted and, and down by one notch. That's it. So you can also use this control. Otherwise, I've configured them on the control. Another thing, uh, during the takeoff, um, I will give full throttle. You can see the RPMs coming over here. Uh, I will give full throttle and uh, then um, I will pitch up a bit. As soon as I'm off the runway, I will try to retract uh, or not uh, try to, <laughs> I will <laughs> retract the flaps and um, then again, I will uh, try to keep uh, my speed at seven, uh, 75 knots. So over here you will see the speed and over here you will see the altitude. And um, one more thing, you have to adjust the barometric pressure in order to have the right altitude uh, uh, readings because, you know, uh, this plane actually reads uh, or uh, gets the altitude based on the barometric pressure, the change in the pressure. Uh, the altitude is being uh, being shown over here. So how to get this? If you go here on the main page, or rather, what you can do is this: you can just simply go over here, weather, and you can get get it. It's one zero one five. So in order to change the barometric pressure, you can see uh, this knob over here. Uh, this is this is the round one and triangle. Triangle changes the course. If you are flying in the um, uh, in the VR mode or the heading mode, then this course works. Otherwise, right now we are in the nav mode, so it's not working. It says GPS. So I can just move this larger knob, and I can set the altimeter. Now I'm I'm getting the right altitude um, over here. 
another thing um, this is uh, the unit uh, you can also change the units of this if you are not seeing uh, the proper units then I will tell you how to do this uh, you go to this primary flight display options and over here you have altitude units if you press this this is now coming in HPA and this is now coming in so you can change the units so I keep it at HPA because you know um, this always comes as an HPA over here so once you set it it's there and then you can press back back one more time and it's gone that's it now let's release the parking brakes and let's uh, take this plane up in the air So I will give now full throttle. Now you can see the RPMs are increasing. And at uh, 60 knots, I will just uh, pull back on the yoke and take off. And that's it. Now I can uh, retract the flaps, no need, and uh, the flaps actually provide drag as I've told you before the speed will not increase. Now the speed you can see it's increasing because my uh, vertical speed you can see it's coming over here, uh, it's not uh, much. So you control your speed during the takeoff by not adjusting the throttle, rather uh, increasing or decreasing the pitch of the, uh, the plane. Uh, as you can see now, uh, when I decrease it. As you can see, vertical speed is now zero, nothing. I'm just leveled off and the speed is increasing. So if I want to decrease the speed, I will pitch up the plane. So right now you can see my vertical climb is 1000 feet per minute, 950 feet per minute, 850. So it's changing. So just uh, climb up and then you can control the speed. So that's how you control the speed by adjusting the vertical speed. I can further increase it and you can see the speed is decreasing just zoom in uh, to see whether I'm following the flight plan or not so 75 knots is a good speed uh, after the takeoff because you want to attain the altitude as soon as possible so that's why you keep it like this. Now it's time to turn on the autopilot. I will turn it on and now the autopilot is on. Now you can see the plane is leveling off because I haven't set uh, the vertical speed. So if I press the vertical speed button over here and if I change it up, nose up, now I will just release the yoke and the plane will actually now start to follow this. Uh, but for this I have to again uh, take the plane from the roll mode because you know right now uh, the autopilot is controlling the roll so it will not follow the flight path I will show you just give it some time and you will see now the vertical speed is working uh, I can further increase the vertical speed because the speed is 96, 95 I want to keep it at 75 so I can have a high vertical speed as you can see it's 1300 right now so this is where it's going now you can see next desired track is 313 degrees but the plane will keep on flying straight it will not follow this because over here on the FMA roll is coming. So right now the autopilot is controlling the roll. Again, one more thing, the speed you can see it's reducing. So I can like keep it at, let's say 1000. Okay. And the plane will then all level off at 5000 uh, feet. So let's wait for the plane to deviate from the flight path. Now you can see I have crossed the flight path. I'm not following the flight path. And that's it. Now, in order to get back to the flight path, what I can do is this, I can uh, fly in the heading mode or I can fly in the nav mode. So let's give you uh, some idea about the, uh, the heading mode. So right now you can see the heading bug is over here, uh, heading 359 degrees, but the desired track is 313. So what I can do is this, I can move it to 313, the heading bug. I can keep it at 313. And then I can go in the heading mode. As soon as I'll go in the heading mode, you will see heading coming instead of roll autopilot is active and plane is 
going with the vertical speed now you can see the speed is reducing so that's why I can just pitch down a bit I can keep it at let's say 700 let's see if the speed increases now you can see the plane has actually turned in this direction but it's not following this path you can see this deviation is coming there is a huge deviation and now I will keep on flying um, in this direction 313 degrees but parallel to this line this is something really interesting now in order to go there you have to actually intercept this line and once you are on this line then you fly like this so this interception is coming also deviation is also coming over here that's why this is known as the ghost deflection indicator so what I can do is this I can uh, move this heading towards the left side because I have to move left to intercept this line so I can like intercept it by 45 degrees so this is actually 45 this is 90 so this is 45 degrees so I will keep the heading bug over here just right over here on the west so if I move it over here now I will intercept it by 45 degrees so the plane is now turning left towards this line and now you will see soon this line will start to move in the middle so it means that you know I'm near uh, this line I have to follow that now the speed is stable at 75 knots and the plane is going to this altitude If I press altitude what will happen you can see vertical speed has disappeared whatever the altitude was now the plane is actually leveling off at that altitude so if I just let's say if I want to climb to 6000 oh, I have actually deflected a lot from this line but I will tell you so if I want to climb up to 6000 I can just change the altitude then again vertical speed and then I can just set it to 400 now you can see I'm on the other side of uh, the line so let's go back <laughs> and try to intercept it again so this is the heading mode so I'll just keep it over here and just go back to this line again so it's really interesting you can just like um, make your flights really interesting now the plane is about to uh, level off at 6000 you can see this blinking because you know 1000 feet to go so that's why it blinks over here now again if you look at um, the flight mode in the CATM um, heading mode and uh, you flying in heading mode autopilot is on vertical speed is set, set to 600 feet per minute and uh, plus uh, going to Akbar and the total distance to uh, to be covered is 17.3 now you can see this course deflection indicator is coming in the middle so now I can set the heading towards this heading 313 and now you can see I'm following this line there will be a little bit of deflection you can just move this heading a bit again uh, to order in order to follow it uh, just like like this go then you can you know once you are on this line then you can just make some little adjustments to follow this line and that's it now you can see that uh, I'm following this line so that's why it's um, this course deflection indicator is really impo important it tells you whether you're following the course or not so even if I want to fly in this heading mode I can keep on flying in this heading mode and everything is good now again one thing what I can do is this I can again go off the course a bit and let's see if I turn on the nav mode what will happen so now you will just keep an eye on over, over here let's have some uh, some good deflection from the course as you can see this reflection is there and that's it now let's go into this nav mode nav mode will actually uh, follow uh, the GPS flight plan if I press nav what will happen now you will see GPS started to come over here so it means the plane is actually following the GPS flight plan and now it will start to move towards this line so this is really good altitude is blinking it means the plane is at 6000 feet now the speed will increase with this uh, you can reduce uh, the RPMs uh, keep it at 2400 put less stress on the engine so in this plane the autopilot controls everything except for the throttle you have to do it yourself so 2420 rpm is a, is, is a good rpm and uh, I'm flying on that now you can see the plane is actually following uh, this flight path that's it 
there's one more thing I just wanted to elaborate uh, just make sure over here the OBS is not active if uh, you uh, just activate OBS the plane will stop to follow uh, this uh, flight path so let's uh, keep it inactive one more thing <laughs> and CDI should always be in the GPS if you are following the GPS mode that's it. Uh, doing VR navigation with this plane is also really interesting and uh, it brings a lot of you know interest in the flight so right now everything is looking good and uh, hopefully i've covered everything for you uh, you can also uh, just like go through all options over here um, on the navigation display and plus on the primary flight display uh, to have more information about the g1000 but uh, for this video whatever was required i have just taken you through all that information and I would just try to keep it simple because, you know, um, as a beginner, everything becomes really overwhelming. I remember um, initially when I was like opening different uh, reading material or videos and then, you know, so much information coming in, I used to get confused. So that's why I'm just telling you only those bits of information which are required to carry out this flight. Uh, however, I will be making a complete video uh, to cover the G1000. So hopefully uh, you must have learned a few things from, uh, from this video and uh, if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video the comment section is there for you thank you very much for watching this video have a nice day hope to see you soon